This video is part 6 of my equipment series of videos, in this case covering a German self-propelled artillery and how they were organised. This includes self-propelled mortars, self-propelled howitzers and self-propelled multiple rocket launchers. I created these in order to assist my efforts in determine what equipment was used when and in which formation. This is a specific issue when creating equipment data charts or organisation tables for the German army or any army in World War II. Just a quick note, I had a surprising amount of difficulty in getting source material on the development history of some of this equipment and for the more ex you know, esoteric pieces of equipment exactly how they were used. So as a result, uh, where I have any doubts, I'll indicate it accordingly and uh, you should take that information that I provide with possibly a grain of salt as a result. The Germans were an early adopter of the concept of self-propelled mortars, which they primarily used in their reconnaissance formations. The SDK of Z 250-7 was a standard mortar carrier equipped with the 8.1cm GRW-34 mortar, fixed internally and given to the 4th platoon, platoon of each Leiterpanzer Aufgerung Company, or Light Armoured Reconnaissance Companies, with 42 rounds in store on the vehicle. The SDK of Z 250-7 is usually accompanied by an ammunition transporter, which was a supply vehicle carrying 66 more rounds and two MG-34s with 2010 rounds for close support. They were generally given to platoon commanders with additional radio equipment. This shows a clearly a staged and early version of the uh, SDK of Z 250-7. Note the mortar was pointing forward. The SDK of Z 251-2 Schutzenpanzerwagen Granatwerfer was a self-propelled 81mm mortar carrier. It carried 66 rounds for the GRW-34 light mortar, or medium mortar. A base plate was also stored so that the mortar could be offloaded and used outside of the vehicle. This shows an internal photograph of the SDK of Z 251-2. While not clear, the mortar was facing forward. The uh, Leiterpanzer Aufgerung Company, or Light Armoured Reconnaissance Company, was armed with self-propelled mortars from June 1943 of either type, that is the 250 and or the 251 version. This was part of the 4th platoon of each company, which was the heavy weapons platoon and two were allocated to each company. I'm certain where they were allocated prior to this date. I suspect they were slowly rolled into the reconnaissance battalions from June 1940 onwards. With a possible total of 800 vehicles, they must have been allocated elsewhere, possibly the armoured Panzer Grenadier companies. As there were only 20 to 30 armoured reconnaissance battalions, this would only require 120 to 180 vehicles, so the rest of the vehicles had to go somewhere, even considering losses. The Germans were a reasonably early adopter of self-propelled howitzers. Although they didn't have any at the beginning of the war, they quickly identified a requirement for these vehicles and started to jury-rig them before they came out with official production versions. A Panzer III Aushach tank chassis was used to mount the same 15cm Sieg 33L11 heavy field howitzer that was used on the 15cm Sieg 33 Aus Fagestell Panzerkaftwagen II that had an extended Panzer II tank chassis. This vehicle was called the 15cm Sieg 33L11 Aus Fagestell Panzerkaftwagen III Aus H. Only one was ever built, or converted I should say. This vehicle was believed to have been used by the German Afrika Korps Schützenregiment 200. 90th Light Infantry Division, attached to the SIG Company uh, 708 between 1942 and 1943 and saw action in September 1942. Krupp mounted a 10.5cm LEFH 18-1 artillery light field howitzer on top of a shortened Panzer IV tank chassis in an open top turret. It was given the official designation 10.5cm LEFH 18-1 Aus Geschützwagen 4B. The first one was completed at the Krupps Grusenwerk factory in August 1941, three more in September, four in October, one in November and one in December 1941. 
The ten vehicles were accepted into the Army in January 1942. During 1942, the ten prototypes underwent trials on the German Army's eastern test range, while the Feldwarusch Batterie Field Test Battery, 16th Panzer Artillery Regiment, 12th Panzer Division. These were successful. An order for a further 200 10.5 cm LEFH 18-1 SF Aus GW 4B SPGs were placed as a result. The order for the additional 200 was cancelled in November 1942 after it was decided to mount the gun on obsolete chassis instead of the Panzer IV chassis. The regiment was destroyed in early 1943 in the Stalingrad pocket. It is unknown how the 16th Panzer Artillery Regiment 12th Panzer Division Light Artillery Battalion equipped with this weapon was organised. I assumed there were two batteries of three weapons and one of four weapons, but this is purely a guess. On the 23rd of May 1942, Hitler attended a demonstration of newly constructed self-propelled guns where captured enemy vehicles had been converted to carry artillery howitzers and anti-tank guns. A decision was made to build 160 Zesfallefurten self-propelled guns based on the Lorraine 37L Schlepper tractor. 60 would carry the 10.5cm LEFH howitzer, 40 would carry the 15cm SFH 13 howitzer, and 60 would be armed with the 7.5cm Pac-40 anti-tank gun. Hitler ordered the immediate assembly of 30 15cm SFH 13-1s Alps GW Lorraine Schleffers SPGs on the 25th of May 1942. The contract was awarded to Alket, which was based in berlin Bogoschwaden. The order was completed in June 1942. An additional 72 were built in France between July and August 1942 by Bau Commando Becker, bringing the total made in World War II to 102. Some sources that at present cannot be verified state that a further 64 were built by Alquette in their factory near Berlin. That would bring the total built to 166. The initial batch of 30 Alquette built 15cm SFH 13-1 SF Aus GW Lorraine Schleffers were sent to North Africa and were divided up between three different Panzer divisions, 12 going to the 21st Panzer Division, another 12 going to the 15th Panzer Division, and the remaining six were issued to the 90th Licht Division. 30 were sent to Gepanzertet Artillery Regiment 1 and 30 were delivered to the Gepatten Artillery Regiment 2. Each regiment consisted of five batteries with six self-propelled artillery guns in each battery. The Gepanzertet Artillery Regiment 1 was disbanded in 19 December 1942. Their vehicles were scattered at three apiece to infantry divisions scattered stationed in the west. The Gepanzer Tet Artillery Regiment 2 was reorganised and renamed Artillery Regiment 931 in March 1943 and Lady Panzer Artillery Regiment 155, which was part of the 21st Panzer Division. By June 1944, regimental documentation showed it only had 12 of the thir- original 30 15cm SFH 13-1 SPGs it was issued in 1942. It's possible all but 12 were distributed to the infantry divisions. It's more, most likely all were destroyed or captured by August 1944, although a few may have escaped with their parent infantry divisions, or at least the ones that were allocated to infantry divisions, which were lucky enough to escape the debacle in the uh, mid-1944s. Hitler issued a directive in March 1941 that 16 of the captured French Char B1 tanks were to be converted to self-propelled artillery guns and used to support the Flammenwerfer Alfs Panzer Kaffagen B2 flamethrower tanks as they assaulted Soviet positions on the Eastern Front. It took longer than originally planned to convert the Char B1 tanks to self-propelled artillery guns. Lack of equipment, vehicles, guns and parts were blamed. The Flammenwerfer Alfs Panzer IV Panzer B2 flamethrower tanks went into action without supporting artillery SPGs in June 1941. The Panzer Abteilung Flamm 103 was disbanded in mid July 1941. The B2 Flammenwerfer tanks were a disappointment to the Germans. They kept on breaking down with mechanical problems. They were not reliable and could not be depended upon to get to an enemy strong point and neutralize it. And five of these vehicles were produced in January 1942, five in the following February, and six in March. 
The Artillery Regiment 93 Combat Strength Report dated 31st of May 1943 reported that they had 15 10.5cm LEFH 18-3 ALS GW B2 SPGs, of which 14 were in an operational condition. This, reported also, this report also recorded that 12 WESP 10.5cm SPGs had been issued to the 1st Abtai Lung Artillery Regiment 93 as replacement vehicles for the mechanically unreliable 10.5cm LEFH 18-3 ALS Geschützenwagen B2 SPGs. These were then used as training vehicles to teach new tank drivers, gunners and mechanics their trade skills. The 26th Panzer Division was sent to Italy in July 1943. The 16 10.5cm LEFH 18-3 ALS GWB2s were issued to Artillery Regiment 93, 1st Abteilung or 1st Battalion of the 26th Panzer Division which was in France. The 1st Battalion had three batteries with four self-propelled artillery guns in each battery. The four remaining vehicles were issued to the HQ battery as reserve. Reports state that the vehicle is prone to frequent mechanical breakdowns. It is too safe to say they only saw minimal action. In May 1942, the 10.5cm LEFH-18 ALS GW Lorraine Schlepper was ordered. This used the French Lorraine Schlepper and mounted a 10.5cm howitzer on it. 60 were ordered, but only 12 were built and sent to North Africa. These machines were used in Panzer Artillerie Abteilung of the 21st Panzer Division in North Africa. A further 24 were converted in the field in 1943, although it's possible only 12 were converted and the 12 built earlier survived North Africa. I doubt the latter, but I do have conflicting information in my sources, so I'm not exactly certain. This photo shows a GW LR-105 in late war camouflage. In Normandy, at the head of a Baukommando, a construction command unit, the Germans converted a further 12 Lorraine 37L tractors into self-propelled artillery guns by fixing a 10.5cm LEFH 18-40 howitzer on top of it, thus and making an armoured open crew compartment. The Germans equipped two Panzer Artillerie Abteilungs with this vehicle, the 21st Panzer Division in North Africa, where it's assumed all vehicles were lost, and later the reformed 21st Panzer Division in France. These were probably organised into four vehicle batteries, with three making up a battalion, or possibly uh, six vehicle batteries, with two making up a battalion. I suspect the latter is the correct organisation because that matches the WESP organisation, but quite frankly I found it very difficult to find any accurate source material indicating exactly how these guys were organised. On D-Day, 6th of June 1944, the three battalions of the Panzer Artillery Regiment 155 of the German Army 21st Panzer Division were equipped with a total of 24 10.5cm LEFH 18-40 Als Gestutzwagen Lorraine Schleppers and 12 15cm SFH 13 Gestutzwagen Lorraine Schleppers self-propelled artillery gun conversions. The total amount or number of 10.5cm LEFH 16 Als Gestutzwagen FCM 36 built is, is a little bit unclear and has not been confirmed. Some say only 8 were built, while other sources say 12 or even 48. At present, there is no documentary evidence to confirm the exact number. The reason why 8 is the preferred number is because of a photograph taken inside the tank conversion factory workshop that shows 6 10.5cm gun barrels on the floor waiting to be hosted onto the newly built SPG gun mounts. And in the background, there are two FCM 36 tanks tank-based artillery SPGs already fitted with gun barrels. However, there is good evidence that 12 were actually produced, as German Army orders shows 8 were sent to an artillery battalion th on the 31st of October 1942, and later 4 more were sent to the same unit in early 1943. With the fall of France, it was believed that roughly 50 FCM-36 tanks remained in operational service. The Germans decided to use some of these French tanks to help strengthen their occupation forces around France. 
These captured tanks were known as Beutepanzers, or trophy tanks. 37 were used as tanks and given to the Germany, German Army designation of Panzerkaufwagen FCM 737, the letter or slash F, the letter F indicating that the tanks were of French origin. 10 FCM 36 tank chassis were used to mount the 7.5 cm pack anti tank guns. These tank destroyers were known as Marder Buns. It's not clear if Panzerkaufwagen FCM 737 tanks were withdrawn from internal security patrol and converted into self propelled artillery and anti tanks or anti tank guns, or if the chassis came out from came from knocked out or abandoned FCM 36 tanks that were recovered or captured on the battlefield. 8. 10.5 cm LEFH 16 ALFS GW FCM 36 artillery self propelled guns were issued to the Gepanzer Artillery Abteilung or Armoured Artillery Battalion, uh, which I think was a uh, army level formation, and the order was dated 31st of October 1942. They were divided up between two self propelled artillery battle batteries called 1st uh, Battery and 2nd Battery. Four SPGs were in each battery. A further, further four were issued for deployment. They were put into the third battery. This gives us a strength to, uh, of 12 vehicles in total and thus matches up with the estimate that 12 of these vehicles were built entirely. The Germans also mounted the 10.5 cm howitzer on a H-39 lot tank to create the GW H-39. The Germans also mounted an old 10.5 cm howitzer on the same chassis to create an assault gun. And this causes an enormous amount of confusion because often it's difficult to know if we're dealing with the assault gun version or the self-propelled howitzer version. We know 24 of these vehicles were converted, but some sources indicate 48. This could include 24 assault guns, or there may have been a second armoured battalion equipped with a weapon I am not aware of. It's likely these vehicles were converted in late 1942, but I'm unable to find exact information on the date that the conversion occurred. While I have these vehicles in the self-propelled howitzer video, they were also used as assault guns by the 21st Panzer Division, so maybe better placed there. I am really uncertain as the 10.5cm LEFH-18 was a light field gun rather than an infantry gun and I would seriously doubt that this weapon was used as an assault gun weapon. So as a result, I have to assume that uh, there were two types of vehicles here, as I indicated earlier. Uh, some were the assault gun, which used a older version of the 10.5 centimeter. And the ones that we're dealing with here is the 10.5 centimeter later version, which was used as a self-propelled howitzer. One of the easiest ways of telling the difference between a 10.5 cm LEFH-18 Schutzwagen 39H self-propelled howitzer and a 10.5 cm LEFH-16 Schutzwagen 39H SPG is to look at the armoured housing that surrounds the gun's recuperator mechanisms. On the 10.5 cm LEFH-18 there are two, one above and below the gun as you can see in this photo. On the World War I 10.5cm LEFH-16, there is only one below the gun barrel. The latter almost certainly was used exclusively as a self-propelled assault gun. This is a picture, obviously, as of the self-propelled howitzer version armed with the 10.5cm LEFH-18. At least 24 10.5cm LEFH-16s and 10.5cm LEFH-18s of Geschutzwagen 39H self-propelled guns went into action in Normandy in June 1944. They were part of the German Army Assault Gun Battalion, Schirmtelschutz Abteilung 200 of the 21st Panzer Division. The last ones were knocked out when they were caught in the fillets pocket and subjected to intense bombing, shelling and gunfire in August 1944. The German mechanics managed to repair a number of British Vickers Mark 6Bs and Mark 6C light tanks. These were known as Beutepanzers or trophy tanks and given the official designations of Leica Panzerkaufwagen Mark 6B 735E or Leica Panzerkaufwagen Mark 6C. 736-E. They were used for combat, reconnaissance, internal police security and tank crew training. 
The letter E in brackets refers to the country of origin of the captured tank, in this case England. The German army needed artillery that could keep up with the tanks of the Panzer Division. A decision was made to use some of the captured tanks, including the Vickers Mark VI light tanks, as self-propelled artillery guns and mounted a gun or a howitzer on the tank chassis. A German engineer called Oberleutnant Becker, who had been attached to the tank producing factory of Alket in Berlin, organised the mounting of six World War One era 10.5cm LE FH-16 howitzers on top of captured Vickers Mark VI tanks. The six converted Vickers Mark VI light tanks, now fitted with the long-range 10.5cm LE FH-16 artillery howitzer, Howitzer was placed in the 15th Battery of Artillery Regiment of the 227th Infantry Division. They were divided up into two platoons of three. The 15th Battery was engaged in heavy fighting on the Eastern Front, with the battery being effectively destroyed by March 1942. The German Hummel, or Bumblebee, was a self-propelled gun based on the Geschützwagen 3-4 chassis and armed with a 15cm howitzer. The Hummel was designed in 1942 after the need for mobile artillery support for tank forces became obvious. A total of 705 Hummel 15cm self-propelled artillery guns were built by the end of the Second World War in 1945 and an additional 157 Hummel ammunition carriers were also produced. Other sources indicate a total of 725 Hummels were built. The first five production series Hummels were completed in February 1943 and entered service in March 1943. They were sent immediately to the Eastern Front to provide artillery support for the Panzer Divisions. The initial contract for 500, including the ammunition carrying Munizentrage vehicles or versions, were completed in January 1944. The new improved version of the Hummel appeared in early 1944. A total of 705 Hummels were reported as completed by the end of March 1945, according to this source anyway. The Hummel first participated in large-scale combat at the Battle of Kursk, where some 100 served in armoured artillery battalions, Panzer Artillery Abteilungs of the Panzer Divisions involved in that conflict. They were formed into separate heavy propelled, heavy self-propelled artillery batteries, each with six Hummels and one ammunition carrier. The authorised establishment of the Panzer Artillery Regiment of the here armoured Panzer Division that took part in the Battle of the Bulge, Ardennes Offensive in 1944, had three Abteilungs or battalions. The 2nd and 3rd Battalion comprised of tow 10.5cm, 15cm and 17cm howitzer, but the 1st Battalion was equipped with artillery self-propelled guns. Within the 1st Abteilung or battalion, the 3rd Batterie had six Hummel self, uh, 15cm artillery SPGs in it. The Vespa was officially called the 10.5cm Leica Feldhalbitzer R18 Aus Fahrgäste Panzerkaufwagen II by the Waffenart, but known by every foot soldier as the Vespa or Wasp. After Alket produced a prototype for test in late 1942, Farmo Ursus plant in Warsaw was charged with the design. On the 14th of July 1942, the Panzer Commission approved the concept and Hitler confirmed an order for 1,000 on, the, on July 25th. But the production only began in February 1943 and lasted until June 1944, when the main factory was captured by the Red Army. In total, 676 were delivered. An additional 159 gunless Vespers were produced to serve as mobile artillery ammunition carriers. By March 1945, 307 were still in active service. It was initially armed with the L-26 gun, but later armed with the L-28 10.5cm howitzer. The biggest part of the Vespa production went on to the Eastern Front, and the first Panzer Artillery Abteilung equipped with this vehicle appeared in March 1943. They saw extensive service al alongside the Hummel, first at Kursk, and then with all three Eastern Front groups. They were so successful that after reading reports, Hitler ordered all, all other conversions based on the Panzer II chassis to be stopped and all work to go on the Vespa. By the summer of 1944, some Abteilungs were sent to Normandy as reinforcements. They fought in Italy as well, taking part in the pounding of Allied forces in the Anzio pockets and defending the Caesar and Gustav lines. No less than 36 Panzer divisions, including SS and special units, received Vespers. 
seeing active service on all fronts after 1943. The authorised establishment of the Panzer Artillery Regiment of the Heer Panzer Division that took part in the Battle of the Bulge, Ardennes Offensive in 19, December 1944, had three Abteilungs or battalions. The 2nd and 3rd Battalion comprised of towed weapons, but the 1st Battalion was equipped with artillery self-propelled guns. The 1st Abteilung consisted of two batteries of Vespers, each of which had six vehicles. The 3rd battery had the Hummels, of which there was six of those vehicles. The late version, or at least one source I had called this the late version, and even that I'm uncertain if it is actually a late version, but anyway, this late version of the Vespa was equipped with the L28 10.5cm howitzer. I'm uncertain when the guns were upgraded from L26 to 28, how many were upgraded, uh, and why they were upgraded. Obviously, the L28 meant that the gun was slightly longer, but no matter how much I looked at various photographs, I couldn't really ascertain a big difference between the gun lengths. So, once again, I'm really very uncertain what this whole L26 slash L28 uh, difference really represented. I may need to do a bit of additional research. I have to assume that the L28 version of the Vespa would have been organised in the same manner as the L26 version of the Vespa, and my guess is that it used pretty much the same ammunition, so it's quite possible they were interchanged as well. While the Russians were well known for rocket artillery, the Germans were also an early adopter with a reasonably good range of rocket artillery early in the war. It was only in the Eastern Front that they started using it a lot more, as we'll discover with ammunition usage of the, the next rocket artillery weapon that we'll be dealing with in this video. The 251-1 rocket launcher, called uh, Walking Stuka, or Wurf Ramen 40, equipped with, sit works, equipped with six side-mounted frames for launching 280mm rockets. The Wurf Ramen 40, literally a launch frame 40, was introduced in late 1940 to give units more firepower. The launch frame for the 28cm high explosive or 32cm incendiary rockets could be fitted to a variety of vehicle chassis. And in the case of the SDK of said, 251s, six frames were attached to the hull sides. Only a few rockets, you know, a comparatively few rockets were used before the invasion of Russia. To be exact, 3,212 were launched or fired until March 1941. Another 1,032 were fired during the campaigns in the Balkans. When Operation Barbarossa was launched, usage increased. Total usage on the Russian front until the end of 1941 was 11,268 rockets fired. In 1942, 46,028 centimetre and 10,032 centimetre rockets were launched. In 1943, this rose to 103,028 centimetre rockets and 15,032 centimetre rockets. When mounted on the SDK Z251 using the common mounting, a frame with six base plates were used, with three on each side. My thought on this matter is that really there were no real special vehicles. What occurred was the frames were issued to whichever units had SDK Z251s and ammos accordingly, and people could basically fit them as they saw, as they wish. Because I couldn't really identify a specific vehicle type that was unique, it was very difficult, it was impossible for me to determine exactly how these weapons were organised. I'm assuming if they were special weapons, that is the SDK of Z251s were not used for any other purpose, they may have been organised in batteries of four vehicles, but this is only a guess. My gut feeling is that what was issued was the actual launch mechanism, the base plates that could be fitted on an SDK of Z251s and the ammunition and basically the unit could decide how they wish to use it. I've got the 32cm in a separate area here and I probably shouldn't. To the best of my knowledge one of the sources indicate the 28cm was the HE round, the 32cm was the incendiary round and there were significantly less 32cm rounds launched. As a result I my strong feeling is that actually the frames were identical, it was just people mounted or used different rockets as they saw need. 
Actually, uh, these particular rockets were issued with the frames on them, so I would assume that the whole arrangement was somehow tacked onto the side on these mounting plates. Nonetheless, um, I've got a separate entry here for the 32cm, which, to the best of my knowledge, was an incendiary weapon. Now this shows, um, I'm not sure if it's a photograph or if it's a graphic, I think it could be some kind of merged arrangement of a rocket being launched. It looks quite um, cool, so to speak. As you can see by the frames, um, they're wooden frames, and you can see they're mounted on these metal protrusions that come out of the base plate. So once again, without any real uh, firm knowledge in the matter, my gut feeling is that the frames were somehow mounted up there by hand, secured to the frame, and then it would go off and launch. Once launched, they would have to remove the whole wooden frame and put a new one. As a result, you know, some of these could be the 32 centimetres, some of these could be the 28 centimetre rocket. Assuming the uh, rockets were basically mounted together in some sort of mix, um, then I'm also completely uncertain how the 32 centimetre um, mounted vehicles were organised, uh, because I don't know how the 28 centimetre vehicles were organised. Once again, if they were specialists, that is dedicated to this purpose, they were probably organised into batteries of maybe four vehicles each, but more likely the, uh, the frames and the uh, ammunition was issued to various units and the commander just simply mounted them on vehicles as they saw fit. If the, the latter is correct, it's quite possible that only single vehicles were used. The uh, Wolf uh, Raman 40, or Launch Frame 40, was also mounted on captured French vehicles, in this case the French Renault UE. Uh, there were two mounts. Um, this shows a rear mount, which allowed for four rockets, and there were also another route where you had uh, two rockets hanging off each side. Now, this is a, a photograph of the uh, Renault UE with the rear mounted four rockets all in a row. Now, this vehicle must have been dedicated as a rocket launcher, probably unlike the SDK Z251, so I would assume that they were probably organised in unique kind of organisations. Um, as with the SDK Z251 a version of this, I'm uncertain how these weapons were organised. However, in this particular case, we know that there were 50 of these vehicles converted, so I have to assume in this case that they were actually organised into more traditional batteries of rocket artillery. Mm -hmm. So in this case, my guess is uh, four vehicles per battery, maybe three of these batteries together to form an abdelum. They were often used to support panzer operations, according to one source, especially in the early days of the invasion of the Soviet Union. May, many, uh, also, many of these improve, improvised vehicles were used during the fighting in Normandy. So, based on that particular source, uh, these weapons were probably allocated to the Panzergrenadier battalions, or Panzer divisions. The Panzerwerfer 42, Alfs Maltier, SDK Z4-1, first went into production in April 1943, and was produced until March 1945. Hitler called for production of the vehicle in January 1942, and the vehicle first saw its first tests on the Eastern Front in the fall of 1943. Opel was the main manufacturer, producing most of the components, including the 3.6-litre .6 six-cylinder Adam Opel engine, which had 68 horsepower and an 80-litre fuel capacity. Throughout the three years it was produced, 300 Panzerwerfer and 289 of its variant, the munitions version, were made. The weapon was introduced throughout the army, the German army, on, by May the 14th, 1944, when it was deployed in France. There were other variations of the vehicle as well. Throughout the years in production, there were changes in armouring and suspension, along with small changes in the shape and thickness of the steel armour, resulting in three specific variants of the vehicle. The 7th Werfer Brigade, made up of the 83rd and 84th Regiments, was sent to Normandy from Bevieux after D-Day, and on June the 10th it was in Falais. The next day it was about 10 kilometres from Caen. The unit was part of the attack on the Oren Bridge, which was a British-held position over the Oren River. The 84th Regiment of the Brigade had 14 combat-ready Panzerwerfer, and the 83rd had about the same. Some other Werfer units were the 101st SS Werfer Abteilung, 101st 
Stellung Werfer Regiment and the 102nd SS Werfer Abteilung, which was part of the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. I'm uncertain of the exact organization um, of the four batteries. Um, you know, it could be that there were four batteries of two or two batteries of six. They often operated in groups of three, so it's more likely we're dealing with six vehicle batteries. The odd number of vehicles is also a puzzle, so I would have ex ex expected a full strength unit would have three batteries of six vehicles or 18 vehicles rather than the 14 the records had. But I would have to do a lot more research on the matter before I can confirm the structure. What you see before is, is one of the guesses, which basically shows three batteries of four guns or rocket artillery and two in reserve, uh, but probably the more likely is that it was organized into three batteries of six uh, rocket artillery weapons and that one of the batteries was lacking a couple of these vehicles. The Schwer Wehrmachtschlepper, or SWS, was developed as a medium half-track and used to transport supplies to frontline troops or as a towing vehicle for light artillery. However, on the, on the large rear flat load compartment, some other applications had been developed, such as a rocket launcher. One modification was the Panzerwerfer 42 Alfs SWS, a 10-barrel, 15-centimeter Niemenwerfer 42 rocket launcher placed over an armoured ammunition storage compartment. The rocket launcher, developed as a device to create smoke screen screens, was soon used as a real artillery able to launch high explosive ammunition as well. It could shoot the rockets with impressive and deadly effects. The original structure of the transport vehicle was strengthened with additional sheets to protect the crew from enemy fire and from the negative effects of the rocket launcher. Only inf little information is available of the SWS as an armoured self-propelled rocket launcher armed with the 15 centimetre uh, Niemenwerfer called Panzerwerfer 42. Um, verifiable, we at least got one photograph or one piece of evidence that one vehicle was delivered to a unit and used in combat, but it's we don't have really much other information. Now, if one vehicle was sent to a unit, then we can assume there were at least enough to uh, equip a battery, if not a uh, Abteilung or even more. But quite frankly, I found this vehicle surprisingly mysterious. This shows a photograph of one of these weapons that clearly was used in combat. And I'm assuming uh, this is supposedly the evidence that at least one was shipped to a combat unit and actually used in combat. I have to assume this vehicle was organized in the same manner as the SDK said four. So each regiment contained 14 or probably more likely 18 vehicles which were organized into brigades. Now it's an interesting thing here because they were organized in brigades it did not seem like these were organically attached to Panzer divisions or Panzer Grenadier divisions or anything of that nature. They were probably held at uh, corps or army level and then allocated accordingly which um, is rather interesting. Now this completes my video on the subject of German self-propelled um, artillery. I have no doubt I should be updating this video in the future as, as I obtain new source material. I have posted some of the source material I have used in the URL shown in this image. As indicated before, I was actually quite surprised how little information there was concerning these weapon systems, considering just how much information there were concerning the tank destroyers. So anyway, I suspect that I will need to do some more concerted research in order to fill the gaps. But for all extents and purposes, um, there were really only a few vehicles that were used en masse and organically attached to actual divisions. So it may not be such a major issue for army list creation purposes. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hilde, Heimatland zu kämpfen.